Now keep in mind the goal of this video is a review video. So for each of the problems I'm going to introduce, I'm going to display this pause reminder on the screen. And when you see this, I would encourage you to pause the video and attempt it on your own. If a formula is needed, look back in your notes and find the appropriate formula and use it. And then only when you've attempted on the problem of your own, unpause the video and check the solutions. If you got the problem correct, that's great, move forward. If the problem's incorrect, then look through my solution and try to identify where you went wrong. Was there an error in how you executed it? Was there an error in which formula you're using? Find the issue and then if needed, go back to our class textbook or class notes and try similar problems to reinforce the idea. So if you would, pause the video and when you're ready, unpause to check your work. So here we're asked to find the mean, median, and mode. I think I'll find the mode first just because it's usually the quickest. For mode, I'm looking to see if there's any repetitions and if, excuse me, if there is, the mode is the one that appears the most frequently. So looking through this list, I can see that 98 appears twice and all the other digits appear just once. So my mode for this problem is 98. Now keep in mind if another digit had also appeared twice, then the mode would be 98 and that other value because there can be multiple modes if they tie for most commonly appearing. Okay, next up for median, if I want to find that, keep in mind median is the exact middle digit only if your list is in order. So right now this list is not in order, so I'm going to immediately reorder for median. Okay, and we've got 22. Once I've listed it, I'm going to put a dot so I don't write it again. Next up, it appears to be 83. Then 89. Two 98s. and a 99. Now that I've got at least to greatest, I'm going to go working inside outside till I get to the middle. Lowest one, highest one, second lowest, second highest. I see there's two left in the middle. If there's not an exact middle value, then you average the two middles. So we have 89 plus 98 divided by 2. And when you type this into your calculator, you'll get 93.5 as the median. Next for the mean, that's just the average. So you add all the values together and then you divide by how many values there are. So let's start that. So I've got 83 plus 98. Make sure you don't have any typing in errors here. Plus 22 plus 89 plus 99 plus 98. That's my total sum. Now there's one, two, three, four, five, six digit or six items. So divide by six. And we get 81.5 as the mean. So with that, we found our mean, median, and mode. The next problem has the exact same idea, mean, median, and mode. However, it just introduces it a slightly different notation because we're using our stem and leaf plot. So as always, if you would pause the video now, attempt it on your own, unpause to check your work. So we know the way stem and leaf diagrams work is it has the first digit listed on the stem side and then the leaves are the second digit and it's just a way that we could write it out very quickly without reordering. So for instance, this second row, a stem of one and a leaf of a one and six, that translates to the items 11, 16. This translates to the items 23, 25, 25 again, 29 again. So that's just a quick reminder about how stem and leaves work. So with that in mind, I can find the mean, median, and mode. So the mode, I'm going to look and see which leaf occurs the most frequently. I've got two fives here, and since they're from the stem two, that's 25, 25. Looking, I don't see any other leaf that appears more than once. So we know our mode is 25. Now the median, the stem and leaf, let's verify, single digit 8, 11, 16, 23, 25, 25, 29, 30, that is listed in order least to greatest. So if I want, I can still work and get rid of the lowest and highest one by one till I get to the middle. So highest 30, 
lowest is 8, get rid of those. Next highest is 29. Next lowest is 11, get rid of that. Next highest of 25. Next lowest of 16. And we see there's two left over in the middle. Specifically, the two middle values are a 23 and a 25. So when I average those, I get 23 plus 25 divided by 2. And my median should be 24. And then finally for the mean, I'm going to add all the values together and divide how many there are in the list. So first I've got 8 plus 11 plus 16, I'm just reading the stem and leaf diagram, plus 23 plus 25 plus 25 plus 29 plus 30. So I've got a total of 167. Now let's count. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 items, divide by 8, and my mean is 20.875. Now I think this is the way, fastest way to do the problem. However, if you have trouble working with the stem and leaf diagrams, keep in mind you could at first write out the stem and leaf as a list, 8, 11, 16, 23, 25, 25, 29, 30, and then find the mean, median, and mode from this listed out in this way. So next we're asked to find the sample variance and sample standard deviation for the values listed here. If you would pause the video, attempt on your own, and then unpause to check your work. So in our course notes from this section, we have the steps to calculate the standard deviation. And in particular, for calculating it by hand, we know we can make this chart that will be helpful for us. So I'm going to list out first the data items on my first row. That's 16, 6, 18, 3, 25, 22. The next row always follows deviations from mean. Next becomes the square of that deviation. And if you don't have the process, if you're doing standard deviation in this way and you don't have the process memorized, make sure you have that written down on your personal formula sheet that's allowed for the final exam. So here, I know that I need to find the deviations from the mean, but I need to have the mean first. So the mean is 16 plus 6 plus 18 plus 3 plus 25 plus 22. So adding all those together, I get 90 divided by the fact that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 items. So my mean is 15. Sample mean x bar 15. Deviation from mean is how far is the data item away from the mean. So you do data item minus mean. So 16 minus 15. Deviation from this mean is 1. 6 data item minus 15. Deviation is negative 9. 18 minus 15. Deviation of 3. Continuing. 3 minus 15. Deviation negative 12. 25 minus 15. Positive 10. 22 minus 15. Positive 7. Now when I square these deviations, these are nice known values, so I know it's square, or I could type in the calculator, 1 squared is 1, negative 9 squared is positive 81, 3 squared is 9, negative 12 squared is 144, 10 squared is 100, 7 squared is 49. Now the next step in the standard deviation process is to sum all of these together. Add them all together, and that's going to be my sum. So I'll add those, so we've got... 1 plus 81 plus 9 plus 144 plus 100 plus 49. So that's 384 is my sum. The next step in the process is to take that sum, 384, and divide it by n minus 1, where n is the number of items. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 items. We want to divide that by 6 minus 1, so that's 384, divided by 5. And that gives me 76.8.
This happens to be my sample variance, s squared. Now, how do you find from the sample variance the sample standard deviation? All you have to do is take the square root. So the square root of 76.8, which when we round to the first few digits is 8.76356, when rounded, that is my sample standard deviation. So next up, we've got a question about z-scores. Pause the video and attempt parts A, B, and C on your own. Unpause to check your work. So here we have a population has a mean of 25, standard deviation of 4. We're asked to find the z-score for a population value 16. We know the formula for z-score in this case is data value minus mean divided by standard deviation. So here I've got 16 minus the mean of 25 divided by the standard deviation of 4. So we have 16 minus 25. That is negative 9 divided by 4. Negative 2.25 is my z-score associated with the value of 16. Next we have z-score for a population value of 31. So z is the data value of 31 minus the mean of 25 divided by the standard deviation of 4, 31 minus 25, 6, divide that by 4, and we get a z-score of 1.5. Now in reading part C, we see it's phrased differently. They no longer give us a data value and ask for a z-score. Instead, they give us a z-score and ask for the data value. So we're kind of reversing the process. So what I need to do is, I know this formula applies. And it tells me if you know the mean, the standard deviation, and if you know the data value, you can get the z-score. But in reverse, if I knew the z-score, the standard deviation, and the mean, I could find the data value. So that's what I'll use here. We know each of these things. The z-score is 2.5. We have the same mean from before of 25, same standard deviation of 4. So that sets up 2.5 equals unknown data value x minus mean of 25 divided by standard deviation of 4. Now we can solve this. We'll multiply both sides by 4 using algebra. That gets rid of the 4 there. 4 times 2.5 is 10. So this becomes 10 is equal to x minus 25. From algebra, I can get x by itself by adding 25 to both sides. What's done to one side of an equation must be done to the other. And we'll get 35 equals the data value x that we were looking for. And then if you want to check your work, you could calculate the z-score for 35 with a mean of 25 standard deviation of 4, and you would definitely get its z-score 2.5. So in our next problem, we've got the data set. You're asked to find the quartiles, find the IQR, upper and lower outlier boundaries, and then if any of our data values are then classified as outliers, I'd encourage you to pause the video and attempt A, B, C, and D on your own. So in finding the quartiles, we know we've got Q1, Q2, Q3, and then we have to remember that we always find Q2 first because it's the median and it's what Q1 and Q3 are based off of. So the first thing I look is if I'm trying to find median, these better be in order. I look and they're not, so my first step is to reorder, least to greatest. And to make sure I don't miss anything, every time I write down a value, I'm going to put a dot above it to show that I've already recorded that one. Looking the lowest is 4, so we start with 4. Then next we've got, I believe, 10. Next is 20 then 25, then 31, 36, 37, 41, 
44, 68, and then 82. Now to find the median, I just work my way towards the middle. Lowest, highest, second lowest, second highest, next lowest, next highest, and we continue. And we can see 36 is clearly the median. It's the exact middle value. So that is my Q2. And now how is Q1 divide decide? how is, excuse me, Q1 defined? It is the median of the values below Q2. So looking at the values here below Q2, I need to find the median of these. So this is the values below Q2 from here to here. The median lowest, highest, lowest, highest, we see 20 is a clear median there. Similarly, Q3 is the median of values above Q2. So the values above Q2 are above the 36 is 37 to 82 lowest highest lowest highest clear middle value between those is 44 so i found q1 q2 q3 now there is a formula that iqr based on a formula in our notes is q3 minus q1 so that will be 44 minus 20 which gives us an iqr value of 24 now C is the upper and lower boundaries. Outlier boundaries, these are also formulas in our notes. Lower outlier boundary. That is known to be Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So for us, that is Q1 is 20 minus 1.5 times the IQR of 24. So 1.5 times 24, make it, add that to 20, and we get a lower outlier boundary of negative 16. Now the upper outlier boundary, that is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR which would be 44 is Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR of 24. And that is an upper outlier boundary of 80. So what that means in this context is for this data set, any value less than negative 16 is considered an outlier in the lower end. Any value greater than 80 is an outlier in the upper end. Now looking at our list, our lowest value is 4, so we have no lower outliers. However, we do have 82 as a value in the list. That is our upper outlier because it is past the boundary of 80. So it says list any values that are classified as outliers. We would just list 82 in this problem. So keep in mind there were a few formulas needed. First, we needed to know the process to find Q1, Q2, Q3. Then we needed to know the formula for IQR. We needed to know the lower outlier boundary formula, the upper outlier boundary formula. And then once we have these boundaries, we need to be able to look at the data set and see do any of our data values classify themselves then as outliers. So next we've got the data set shown on the screen. You're asked to find the 58th percentile. Pause the video and attempt this on your own. Unpause to check your work. Before I find any numbered percentile, I need to first know how many items are in the data set. So I'm going to quickly count that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Make sure as you're counting you don't miss or overcount anything because that will throw off your answer if you get the number wrong. So there's 48 items. Now to find the 58th percentile, I want to say of the 48 items, what item in the ordered list is then larger than 58% of the values? in the list. And as you look at the list, let's just verify that it's in order. 
2, 2, 5, 7, 8, 9, 9, 14, 14, 14, 16, 19, 20. It looks to be in order just glancing through. It's progressing from least to greatest. So this is an ordered list. If the list was not in order, I would have to write it in order, but we don't have to rewrite it in this case since it's already presented correctly. So then of the 48 items, I want to find, since these are listed in order, which location in the list would put me at a higher value than 58% of the data items. So I take my 58th percentile, turn it into a decimal 0.58, multiply it by the number of items in the list and this will not give me the 58th percentile but it will give me the location of the 58th percentile in the list. Type this into the calculator and you get 27.84. Now when you're working with this and you're trying to find the location of the percentile, if you get a decimal you always have to round up to the next value. So for us we're looking at the 28th item in list is the 58th percentile, and this only works if the list is in order, which ours is. So I would just count and find what is the 28th item in the list. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So the second 34, that is the 28th item in the list. So 34 is the 58th percentile. The number 34 is greater than 58% of the data values in this data set. So keep in mind when we were doing this calculation with the 58th percentile times the number of items in the list, we were finding the location because this is the 28th item in the list, but its value 34 is the 58th percentile. So our 58th percentile is 34.